Well, what's up, YouTubers? Jose Quinones of CNC Dude here. Hey, in the past few months, I have been building this CNC router. Now, of course, I bet a bunch of you have caught me on my bluff and basically stated CNC router. Well, where is the router? This could be a CNC plasma cutter. It could be a water jet. It could be a laser. In order for me to dare to call it a CNC router, I better put a router. Well, let's take a look. Well, 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 what do we have here? Is that a router? Some of you may get bogged down on semantics and say, well, that's not a router, that's a spindle. whoop de do. It routes. So now it is legal for me to say this is a CNC router. Today, I'm going to show you how I installed the CNC router into the Z axis. Let's take a look. All right, so as pretty much every other part on this build, I am gonna get the spindle from Amazon. This is the Rad Motor 2.2 kilowatt water cool spindle, 110 volts. Um, it's gonna come with the collet, it's gonna come with the BFD, it's gonna come with the bracket. So it basically has everything that you need to assemble it. And then of course they say it's so low noise, you can literally see and see route in your bed while your wife sleeps exactly what every marriage needs. Um, or, or I'm not sure, maybe this is that some females like to use the spindle uh, and then they get to sleep soundly as we see on the picture. I'm not sure. My wife is already asking for for, uh, for her to borrow the spindle. I'm like, no, 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 this is for CNC routing wood. You get a BFD, a variable frequency drive, and you know, when I saw this, I was fearing, I'm hoping this is not all of the instructions I'm gonna get, that's gonna be lovely. Uh, it is, of course, a water-cooled spindle. I don't know why, to me, this seems better than air-cooled, so simple stuff. You basically have a little, like, fish tank pump, and you fill it up with water, and maybe some coolant if it's super cold, and, uh, you know, this does the trick. It uh, basically keeps your spindle from dying an early life, although for 350 bucks, I'm actually wondering how much this is gonna last. You will receive all of this in a box that looks like it was delivered by Ace Ventura Pet Detective, but uh, luckily everything inside uh, was in good shape. Uh, you know, you get your little fish tank pump, you're gonna get uh, the spindle router bracket, uh, some tubing, the ER20 collets, a wrench, that box is the spindle, I'm sorry, the BFD, and then of course the spindle. Something worth mentioning, be careful when you open the spindle, there is a connector in here, and that's pretty much all you're gonna get. You're not gonna get the four wire cable harness, that's something you're gonna have to buy yourself. I didn't realize copper was so expensive that now they cannot ship it with that. Uh, but that's just how the kit comes, so that's something you'll have to, unfortunately, get on your own. And here we're getting all of the pieces together. Simple stuff, guys. You know, it's just basically the spindle, the bracket, and some parts. Not that I suspected this was gonna work, but I wanted to see what kind of constraints we were gonna face when placing the bracket on top of the existing set axis mounting points. And of course, you can see this is not gonna fly in any way or fashion. I mean, the existing set axis aluminum tabs will collide with the bracket body, and the bracket size where you will put the screws are literally flying up in midair. Uh, so this tells me we will need an intermediary plate to go in between both parts. Unfortunately, from my gigantor pile of aluminum, the only piece I could find that was six inches wide was this, what appears to be sheared aluminum plate, and it was bent, so I had to cut it, and uh, it gave me something rough, roughly six by six inches, which eventually I learned is too short, but that's a story for some other time. The part is processed on the PCNC 1100 CNC mill. Uh, of course, we have to do a bunch of center drilling, drill throughs, and there are two holes that I wanted to be very precise, um, so we're going to pocket those. These are for the dowels. I believe they are 8 millimeter dowels that will allocate the part perfectly with regards to the set axis tabs. And then the last step is to create a little bit of a groove. This is not very deep. It's just to ensure that the plate does not rotate on the tabs. Um, so I think this was maybe 10 thousandths of an inch. 
Um, I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't that deep. I'll put the number on the comments. It's just to avoid the plate from rotating. Then uh, the other holes were re uh, rimmed. Boy, I gotta tell you, r rimming was rimming is not something I do a lot. So I was probably doing something wrong here. A lot of clogging. I guess I'm gonna have to watch a bunch of YouTube videos on how to use rimmers because this was way harder than it needed to be. But at some point in time, I got the holes properly drilled, and then I could tap the holes, which were gonna go. Uh, which we're going to accept the bracket. You have probably seen this machine on some of my other videos. It's a fantastic manual tapping machine. I say machine, but it's manual. Um, it, it, the tap, the taps come out fantastic. But uh, for this part, I have to say, I, I was probably pushing the, the the limit in terms of size. I mean, this part is probably too big for this machine. So I don't even know what's gonna happen when I go to the larger one, to the larger plate. Uh, but nonetheless, I was able to create the threads. Then a little bit of deburring. So for this, I I, I just um, use my hand drill for uh, removing those uh, sharp edges. Make sure to clean up those threads as well as possible. You want to make sure the screws go in without too much of a hassle. Uh, and of course, the threads are looking amazing. I love it. Now, let me show you how I prefer to remove the or to chamfer i just say to chamfer those holes just put the the drill on your drill um the chamfer drill on your drill and go to town it's just it's just way better now let's take a look at how we mount this into the set axis these are the double pings and now is the plate and it just goes in so beautifully i couldn't believe it this is exactly what i wanted to see and you know the only way to to get results like this is basically um with a cnc milling machine because there's no way i would have been able to do that by hand I, I know some other people could have but not me well the interface plate is complete so now we can position the bracket but notice the bracket has no feature so let me say a few things about uh, about what are the implications of this reality you will probably receive the spindle bracket shortly after it comes out of a sand casting mold I admit it is a guess, but I think it's a good guess because it looks like it was sand cast. I mean, it has enough imperfections. It has what it looks to be uh, the finishing from a sand casting mold. And I assure you, nothing in here looks like a machine surface. In other words, I completely doubt this was machined to perfection. And then with some blasting, they gave this, this grainy surface. You can easily validate this claim by using a square and realizing that <laughs> nothing in here is square. This is just, it's just a sand cassette part. It's, you get a bunch of molten aluminum that fills the cavity and has this shape. It has no holes. It has nothing finished. That's the first set of bad news. You are going to have to take this through some sort of machine shop processes and flatten it, make the holes and so on. So if you have a machine shop, no problem, you can do it. But the sheer majority of people are not gonna have a machine shop. So you're gonna have to find either a friend that has a machine shop or maybe uh, gain access through a friend or through your own membership into a makerspace that has all of the equipment to perform these operations. And by this, what I mean is, I don't think you're gonna be able to accomplish this feat with a Dremel. You might be able to do it with a branch bench drill uh, or a drill press, as you say. Really hard to believe you're gonna be able to do it with a manual drill. I mean, you'll be able to get something, but how good is it? I don't know. Now let's talk about the intricacies of putting this on your milling machine so that you can perform the processes that I just discussed, basically surfacing and making the holes. Well, the first problem is that this thing is not flat. So it is a circle, it is round, and how do you know you have it in such a way that this is perfectly flat? Good luck with that. 
All right, so here I'm suffering from some sort of delusions of grandeur, making me believe I am an actual machinist. So I got out my big guns, which are my Gigantor 1, 2, 3 blocks. I believe they're actually called 2, 4, 6 blocks, but whatever. I'm thinking that I can maybe position the bracket by the side tabs so the flat surface is facing up. But here's the first issue. How on earth do I clamp it? Obviously, I can clamp it from the top because I need to fly cut and then drill the six holes. So it occurs to me that maybe I can clamp it through the board with two Tesla clamps, but woof, that was rickety as hell. Not to mention how on earth do I know the rectangle has the board perfectly perpendicular to the axis. So I decided that I was going to use an indicator, but man, let me tell you, that, that didn't work at all. The problem is that the sand casting finish makes the indication super jumpy. It's just a veritable nightmare. Also, this is when I realized that the bracket is not even square, so any indication would have been worthless. So once again, I am duping myself into believing I am a machinist. So I start placing pieces of metal with the delusion that I'm going to flatten every surface. And every single time I came to the exact same question. How the heck am I going to clamp this scum bucket bracket? So I thought and thought, but what truly killed this dream was the realization that even if I could have made this work, I would be drilling into my precision blocks. Heck no. So man, I'm embarrassed to admit, but I gave up and I just decided, let's put this on the vise using one, two, three blocks which I have to say, it is incredibly precarious and dangerous. As you can see, almost no metal is being grabbed by the vise. Man, I could be wearing this on my forehead right now. So I really don't recommend this venue. Incredibly dangerous. Of course, I did take very light passes because I was afraid this thing was going to fly. Again, I don't recommend this. This was incredibly scary. Um, it worked, but man, it's just... If you can, don't do it. Of course, then you're going to center drill and then you're going to drill through. You can see the bracket bending. It, this, is, this is not the way to do it. I tell you, it's so, so lousy. I did finish the 8 millimeter holes on the drill press. And, you know, once, once you go there, now we can mount it. Six screws and it's looking good. You know, I may need to chim this because who knows what kind of irregularities I got on my job. But man, nothing like seeing that spindle mounted into the set axis. Well, there you go, YouTubers, how to mount your spindle into your set axis, officially transforming this gantry system into a legal CNC rotor. I hope you have learned a few things and uh, maybe on how not to do it, but hey, maybe it steers you in the right direction on how to do it correctly. A few things I can share I already know are wrong. Like, for example, the plate that grabs the bracket should have been way longer. That's something I didn't realize at the time. But, you know, you really want the bracket to extend down here so that the router, the spindle, is down here. So that's something I'm going to have to fix. But here, no problem. I mean, I already know that this is going to fit nicely, so all I have to do is make another one. The next step is going to be to wire the motor and hook it up to the BFD. So that's going to be a video on its own. I think this one has been long enough, so I want to thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. I'm going to see you on the next one.